Welcome to New Possibilities, I Speak Truth to Power Without Fear. This is a follow-up to my last video about Jesse Williams and his bold, courageous speech that he gave during the BET Awards. Many people have responded to his video or his speech with a lot of animus, a lot of hostility, a lot of, frankly, racism. And my last video received a lot of views and there were a lot of comments and I'm continuing to receive a lot of comments. A lot of the comments come from racist people. And I wanna take time to respond to some of the things that they have said. And also some comments or some things that I've read online are negative responses from African-American people as well. And I wanna deal with those as well in this video. The first thing that we have to do is define racism because that word gets thrown around. You know, many people are criticizing Jesse Williams. They're calling him a racist. And they're also trying to say that BET is racist. So let's define racism. According to Webster's Dictionary, racism is a belief that race is the primary determinant of human traits and capacities and that racial differences produce an inherent superiority of a particular race. It goes on to say racial prejudice or discrimination. That's the dictionary definition. But we also know that racism is really more comprehensive than that. Racism also deals with the power to oppress, the power to enforce prejudice, the power to actually discriminate against people. And the only group that really exercises or possesses that kind of power in this country is white people. White people have a position of dominance in this society. They have a system that um, gives them privilege, whether we're talking about the criminal justice system, whether we're talking about the economic system, whether we're talking about the political system. Those systems function in a way that is inherently discriminatory towards African-Americans. Those people have power to a degree over black people. So in all actuality, black people in America at this very moment do not have the power to enforce any kind of prejudice. We don't really have any kind of power to exercise true discrimination against an entire race of people. And I could do a whole video on that, but I won't. But many people have said, well, how is this man, Jesse Williams, condemning racism when he's participating in racism by appearing on a quote unquote racist program or channel like BET? They are suggesting that somehow the, just the very concept of black entertainment television alone is racist. They're suggesting that. First of all, as people have pointed out, as you know, some of my subs have pointed out, BET is not racist. They don't discriminate against white people. Many white people have actually received BET awards. So they can't possibly be racist if they're rewarding white artists as well as black artists. In fact, BET not only gives out awards to white people, BET is actually owned by white people. So how is something that's owned by white people gonna be racist towards white people? How does that make any kind of sense? Also, people are accusing Jesse Williams of being a racist. You know, they're accusing him of this, not just for his affiliation with BET, but because of his bold, courageous statements against racism. Why is it that when black men stand up and speak out against racism, they are attacked and labeled as racist? They do that because they want to discredit these black men. They want to 
tarnish these black men. They want to undermine the message of these black men. Most of these people, they don't address the substance of what the brother said. Instead, they want to attack him personally by labeling him as a racist. And I want to go back to this whole thing with BET before I go further about Jesse Williams. Things like BET, magazines like Essence and Ebony, black fraternities and black sororities, black professional organizations, they exist because for so long, black people were marginalized and we still are marginalized today. We're pushed to the corners. We are rejected in many respects by the larger society, even today. Despite the progress that has been made, there is still a need for us to have our own. People want to complain about black people demanding diversity and respect and all that kind of stuff. But when black people build our own, they have the audacity to call us racist when we are simply doing what any civilized people do, and that's doing for self, by setting up our own institutions. So instead of begging, you know, the dominant white society to recognize us, we recognize ourselves. We organize ourselves. We build for ourselves, just like any civilized people do. There's nothing racist about a people creating for themselves what society refuses to create for them. There's nothing racist about black people except in their own when they have been rejected by the larger society. But they want to call this brother racist. Nothing in his speech talked about racial superiority. Nothing in his speech talked about how human traits are determinative based on race how race is the primary determinant for human traits. Nothing in this speech emphasized superiority of a particular race over another. Nothing in this speech advocated any kind of discrimination. So this brother was not making any kind of racist statements. He was speaking out against racism. He was condemning racism. He was talking about the invention of whiteness the idea of white supremacy. This concept that these people who have labeled themselves as white, these, this concept of these people who have this notion that because their skin is pale, that somehow they're superior to others. That's what the brother was speaking out against. He was speaking out against police brutality, speaking out against the police brutalizing and killing black people speaking out against the killing of Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old boy from what I remember. Killed, the police arrive on the scene. The brother has a toy gun playing, as kids do. These police just run up on the scene and shoot him within seconds of arriving on the scene. That's how they treat black people in America. We have constant examples of police brutality, where there is no justice for black people. They can have video footage of the police killing a black man, and somehow it becomes rationalized in the minds of white people and white society. In the mind of the criminal justice system, it's business as usual. Such brutality is justified, such brutality is excused, such brutality is tolerated. In fact, the whole system is designed to protect these police officers. So this brother is right and exact for speaking out against police brutality. People want to talk about black people playing the role of victim. They use such language to shame us into silence, to quiet us, when the fact of the matter is 
black people are victims in this country. According to the Washington Post, police kill black people three times the rate of whites. Black men only make up 6% of the U.S. population, but we make up 40% of those who were killed while unarmed, killed by the police. So this brother is right and exact to speak out against police brutality. It's not playing the role of victim, it's speaking out against a grave injustice. Because these police, as I said before, often get off. And somebody has to have the courage to stand up to this injustice. And I salute this brother for having that courage. I salute him. I respect him. Now, some people are trying to dismiss this brother. You know, and I've noticed that a lot of these white races are doing this. And even some ignorant, misguided black folks. They're saying, well, he's half black. He's half black. He's not really black. He's half white. And... um. He's done good for himself. America's been good to him. So what is he complaining about? And people are suggesting that somehow his complaints lack validity or authenticity or they're not genuine simply because this brother has a white mother. First of all, that has absolutely nothing to do with the merits of the arguments that this brother is raising. Instead of attacking him personally, address the merits of the arguments that he is making. They can't address the merits of the argument. That's why they attack him and they label him as a racist. Because you can't argue against the fact that black people are victimized by the police. You can't argue over the issue of cultural appropriation over how these people exploit our culture and have no respect for our lives. You can't argue with that. So instead of arguing with that, they want to attack this brother because he's biracial. As far as I'm concerned, this brother is black. He identifies black. He is actively involved in the struggle of our people. He is actively identify with his people and he's fighting for his people. So he is black in my mind. We have to quit dividing and conquering ourselves. We have to get rid of this colorism that exists in our community that is destroying us as a community. People want to condemn this brother because he has a white mother. Some of these people are happen to be black. Some of these people happen to be these super black type of um, people, these caricatures of what it means to be pro-black. They have the audacity to condemn this brother simply because he's mixed race. When this brother has proven his dedication to the people, this brother has put it all on the line for his people He's risked everything. It would have been far easier for him to get along, you know, for him to simply be silent and just rake in the money. It would have been easier for him to get more television roles or more movie roles and all that kind of stuff by being silent and being a good Negro. But this brother chose strength over weakness. This brother chose courage over cowardice. And I respect him for that, as I said in the last video. While you have many of these black men that don't have any kind of respect for black women, many of these black men that are born of black women, many of these black men who, are, who have dark complexions, who are highly melanated, Brothers that should love who and what they are and love their people and their women. 
some of these brothers are the most self-hating black men ever. They hate the black woman who is a reflection of the black man. But here you have a brother who was born of a white mother that has more love for black women than many of these self-hating, buck-dancing Negroes who happen to be of a darker hue, who happen to be born of black women. That is a disgrace. We see it here on YouTube. All of these personalities popping up like mushrooms in a garden, spreading a message of hate towards their own black sisters. I want to move on to another point. You know, a lot of people are attacking Black Lives Matter. Not just racist white people, but you also have a lot of a lot of these um, people who are labeled as pro-black attacking Black Lives Matter. First of all, you have you know white people that are attacking you know racist white people who are attacking Black Lives Matter simply because Black Lives Matter is speaking the truth about police brutality. So those people that attack Black Lives Matter, for that reason, those people don't know what they're talking about. Those people are simply trying to suppress the resistance. They are trying to suppress a movement for justice. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to silence that movement by bringing up irrelevant topics, by trying to go off on a tangent about black on black violence. When black on black violence is a completely separate subject that should be addressed separately. They wanna divert the discussion away from holding these police accountable and they want to bring that discussion into a discussion about so-called black-on-black violence. The police are supposed to protect and serve. And these police are not protecting and serving. They are brutalizing, harassing, and killing our people. And they need to be held accountable. And we need movements like Black Lives Matter to do so. Now you have people criticizing Black Lives Matter because they supposedly received funds from George Soros to do their work. My response to that is, so what they received some money from George Soros? What does that have to do with anything? Many people that want to criticize the movement for accepting money from George Soros and others, my question to them is, what have you given to the movement? Have you contributed dollars to any movement that's fighting for our people? Have you given money to Black Lives Matter or to any organization for that matter, fighting for our people? Have you given your time? Have you given your energy to the struggle? If you haven't, you haven't earned the right to criticize the movement for accepting funds from those who are willing to contribute to the movement. You haven't earned that right. And this notion that because a white person or some white people give money to an organization, that that means that somehow the organization is corrupted or somehow that means that the organization is ineffectual, that is a ridiculous, unsubstantiated assumption. Especially about a group like Black Lives Matter who has a proven track record of activism in our communities around this country, around the issues of police brutality. And then some people wanna criticize the movement because there are some prominent leaders within that movement who happen to be homosexual, who happen to be gay or whatever. 
you know, as I said before, I don't support that kind of lifestyle. But I'm not going to completely throw a baby out with the bathwater simply because I disagree with somebody's lifestyle. It's important to note that Black Lives Matter has many types of members as a diverse group. So there's no one stereotype that can fit the description of the membership or even the leadership of that organization. And simply because you disagree with somebody's private personal conduct that has absolutely nothing to do with police brutality, that's not a legitimate reason to go against a movement. There are many things about many people that I disagree with, but that doesn't stop me from uniting with my brothers and sisters in a crisis type of situation that we face as a people. So I think, you know, in summation, I just think that that criticism of Black Lives Matter is unwarranted. I just think it's unwarranted. Also, I was listening to a video today on YouTube when someone was basically going off into some conspiracy theories about Jesse Williams receiving this award, you know, this humanitarian award. They were suggesting it is some kind of plan or plot to set up leadership that leads the people astray. First of all, Jesse Williams is not a leader. He's somebody who has been supportive of Black Lives Matter and supportive of the movement against police brutality, not only just with his words or with tweets or anything like that, but with his actual work, with his actual money, he has contributed to these causes. So he's not some quote unquote leader. He's just an actor who supports a righteous cause. My problem with conspiracy theories is simple. Conspiracy theories often are not backed with actual substantiated facts. They are based solely on conjecture, solely on unsubstantiated, outlandish speculation. Often, these conspiracy theorists kind of remind me of people who believe in the Easter Bunny, who believe in Santa Claus, who believe in leprechauns and unicorns and all that kind of stuff. They believe in these things without any kind of proof or substance. You know, too often we are quick to criticize people. So quick to criticize people, so quick to overanalyze people, Instead of just taking a moment to recognize people for doing something that's great, we often criticize entertainers for not speaking out on the issues, for not standing up when we need somebody to stand up and be courageous. But then when you got brothers and sisters who actually make a statement, who actually do something for the people, they too face criticism from people that are overly intellectual overly critical. And I just think that that's wrong, especially if you don't have any basis in sound, logical, clear facts for criticizing these people. Now, I'm going to just conclude on a couple of things. Um, and that's this. Um, we all know that BET has a history of presenting negative images of black people and all that kind of stuff. Negative, stereotypical images of black people. We understand that. But that should not be, you know, that history should not be a basis for undercutting this brother's speech. A speech that was from the heart, a speech that spoke to actual facts a speech that addressed racism, cultural appropriation, and police brutality in bold and courageous terms. We shouldn't use the history of the 
BT to criticize that brother. And we shouldn't criticize organizations that are actually doing something to address discrimination in this society. That are doing something besides talking about something. That have a track record of fighting against discrimination. Fighting against racism. Because the fact of the matter is, we live in this country. This is our home right now. We are not going to any black utopia anytime soon. So we have to deal with the society in which we find ourselves. And the only way to deal with that society is to fight for full and equal rights under the law and to fight for justice. So I commend this brother again for having the courage to speak out because words have power. Because of his bold, courageous statements, he has the whole country talking about police brutality, talking about racism, talking about cultural appropriation. So I want to thank you all for watching my videos, for subscribing to my channel. I especially want to thank those who have been supportive of my channel from the beginning. So please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.